Is that it? It, that's another thing that, you know, I'm angry at myself because, you know. The Ellen Show is under investigation. Things just aren't going Ellen DeGeneres' way right now, because it seems like with every new week, and sometimes every new day, there is a new kind of allegation being said about her. Allow us to break it all down for you. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 6. Investigated by Warner Media. The Ellen DeGeneres Show has become the subject of an internal investigation by Warner Media. Do you want to win a brand new iPhone or a brand new MacBook Pro? Maybe you'd prefer a $500 Amazon gift card. Well, comment the hidden message in this video for a chance to enter to win. Following numerous accounts of workplace problems on the long-running daytime series, executives from show producer Telepictures and distributor Warner Bros. Television sent a memo to staffers last week saying they have engaged WBTV owner Warner Media's employee relations group and a third-party firm who will interview current and former staffers about their experiences on set. The memo came from the desks of Telepictures Executive Vice President Donna Redier-Linsk and WBTV Vice President of Human Resources Donna Hancock-Husband. Now, at present, the third-party firm that is being brought in to help with this hasn't been named, which in and of itself is a good thing, because that means they can't be influenced beforehand, which is a danger in things like this. While many of Ellen's offenses go back very far, including some we'll touch on in a bit, many of the slates that are coming out now started back in April, when the global lockdown due to the coronavirus pandemic started to spread in such a way that everything had to be taken down in order to prevent further outbreaks. During that time, Variety made a piece that reported about distress and outrage among DeGeneres' production crew, who were subjected to poor communication and told to expect reduced compensation during initial coronavirus shutdowns, even as the series hired non-union crews to mount a quarantine production from the host Los Angeles home. Not the least of which was people like Ellen's crew wondering and worrying about what would happen next and where their money to survive would come from. So, for Ellen to do that while her show was still technically running was a bit of a low blow. Now, Variety also notes that just before they published the article about the slash pay, Ellen did restore things to their natural order. But that was far from the end of it. Ellen and her show conditions. Not long after certain opening salvos was made about Ellen and how she was treating her staff, even more things started to come out that revealed that things on the Ellen show were not as happy-go-lucky and fun as you might expect it to be, given how the show is. Mainly, multiple reports from various sources both in the show and those who had been part of the show state that Ellen was not only a very cold person in real life, but just as importantly, treated the rest of the, her staff like peasants. And yes, that really is the word they use to describe the discourse between Ellen and her staff members. Now, granted, Ellen is a queen in certain ways, including being the queen of daytime TV. But the fact of the matter is that title doesn't allow her the right to go and treat her staff badly. Yet, apparently, she does. For example, one of the big complaints was that staff sometimes don't know what's going on for an episode of the show, which seems like a thing you would want to convey to them for a whole host of reasons. Not the least of which is wanting the show to run smoothly. Here, it's Ellen causing havoc for no apparent reason. Think we're done? Not even close. Because apparently Ellen only treats certain crew members well, and if you were one of those people she chose, you're in luck because that means there's a lot of good things heading your way, including being invited to parties with people that honestly should be attended by the entire crew. What's more, some accounts state that she sometimes encourages a lot of competition between the people who work on her show because, well, just because, the security guard account. And naturally, as someone of importance, she has security to protect her, which is good and needed, but one of them had a nice big story to tell that painted Ellen in a not-so-good light. Tom Majorcag told Fox News that, during his 10-year stint as a senior manager of operations for Security Imagery Specialist, or SIS, he was selected to serve as DeGeneres' executive protector at the 86th Academy Awards. The opportunity meant he'd be escorting DeGeneres, her mother, and her partner, Portia de Rossi, throughout the night from the red carpet to the Dolby Theater and the glamorous post-ceremony Governor's Ball. Basically, he had very typical security work for an event of this nature. And sure enough, nothing happened to Ellen during that night. But when it came to talking about his experience with Ellen and her entourage, it wasn't what you would expect. Ellen is the one person that I've been assigned to, and I've been assigned to quite a few celebrities. That has never taken the time to say hi to me. 
Major Cack claimed. Major Cack said he spent a lot of time with Darasi, who was very pleasant and carried on a conversation. It started going negatively when she introduced me to Ellen, and Ellen pretty much just gave me a side glance out of her eye and didn't even say hello or thank you for protecting my mother, my wife, and me. Major Cack continued. It was very cold and it was very sly and it was actually kind of demeaning in the way that she treats people other than those who are in her circle. So why did he come forward now after all this time? Well, timing, of course. The former protector said the recent allegations against DeGeneres made her staff and former guest, vlogger Nikki DeJager, motivated him to speak his truth. It's bugged me for years, Major Cag shared. I see this problem come across as being very enlightened and positive and awesome and everybody loves her and is in awe and that's really not the case when you meet her in person. He went on, when you see her on TV, people fall in love with her but it is a false facade and bravado. You start hearing these stories and I was like, man, there's gotta be more to this. She's not the person she portrays to be that she's playing off of society. That's my opinion. I can absolutely see through interacting with her firsthand that she doesn't care about anybody else as long as she's getting what she wants. Major Cat concluded, People are starting to see her true self, and that really lends to the support of what my initial thoughts of her have been over the last six years. Wow, again, that is not what you would expect to hear from a former security guard. And to be clear, he gained nothing from this outside of telling a story that has since been corroborated by all these other accounts of Ellen being anything but a fun time. So, just in the course of a few months, Ellen has been called out for being not kind to her staff in the coronavirus early stages, creating a chaotic and unfair work environment for her staff in general, and being a cold person that doesn't even say hi to those who are assigned to protect her. Couldn't get any worse, right? Well, racism in the workplace. Yeah, it got worse. Because BuzzFeed would later do a massive expose with accounts from multiple former employees of Ellen who noted that not only was the show not the best work environment, there was a culture of racism amongst its higher ups. Not with Ellen per se, but the executive producers that helped make the show happen. There were reports of African American women being insulted, having racist jokes made about them because they looked the same, and even being reprimanded for trying to voice concerns about the troubles in the workplace and trying to get things better. And that's just lightly touching on this. There was terrible treatment of staff across the board, to which, once the piece came out, the team behind Ellen made the following statement. We are truly heartbroken and sorry to learn that even one person in our production family has had a negative experience. It's not who we are and not who we strive to be, and not the mission Ellen has set for us, the group said. For the record, the day-to-day -day responsibility of The Ellen Show is completely on us. We take all of this very seriously, and we realize, as many in the world are learning, that we need to do better, are committed to do better, and we will do better. You can almost hear the disingenuous nature of it, can't you? Because to us, this sounds like the most PR written piece ever. However, it should be noted that even if the team didn't want to accept fault or admit wrongdoing, it's out of their hands now as the investigation is already happening. And there you have it, a look at the various instances that have led to the investigation of The Ellen Show and what that investigation might do to the show as a whole. Where do you personally think this will all lead? Will it be cancelled and Ellen fired? Or do you think a massive overhaul will be done to keep everyone safe in the show on air? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you next time on the channel.